Hello, we're now going to look at um, storage in three question seven for um, engineering mechanics one. Um, so this is the next question after the um, the two previous ones that we've been looking at. And again, I'm going to stick with this with the um, the PowerPoint type format with the equations written out um, going to the issues with the webcam in the first video as part of this tutorial series. So in question seven, we have um, a pipe assembly, which is subjected to an 80 Newton force, uh, which is coming off at an angle, as we can see here. Um, and we're given some info on the angle, it's given 30 degrees here with the, um, the XY plane. And then that is tilted off at an angle with respect to the Y axis of 40 degrees. And we're asked, what is the moment due to this force about the flange of point A? So point A is this, location here. So that is the uh, fitting there on the wall. So we want to determine what the moment is due to this force um, about this point. OK, we'll give an answer here to help us out just as we, as we check our answer. OK, so our starting point for this really is because we've got a three forces, we just use the vector cross product. So the definition of the moment at any point is the vector cross product where we have a displacement vector and the force vector. And I mentioned in class that it's really important the sequence of these. So the displacement vector comes first and then the force vector. Okay, so what we want is to figure out what um, RAC is and what the vector FR and write these in vector form. And then we'll just do the vector cross product on that. Okay, so what is RAC? The displacement vector is <clears throat> from where you're taking the moment to anywhere on the line of action of the force. So it's from this point here, A, uh, to anywhere on the line of action of this force. And the most convenient point that we have really is point C, where it's attached to the uh, pipe assembly. So what I want to do is to figure out the displacement vector from here up to here. OK, and I get this straight up by inspection. So what I have is a displacement in x, y, and z. So if I'm at look, look excuse me, if I'm at located at point A, uh, how do I get to point C? So you can see that to get to C, I will go out uh, 400 millimeters in the y direction, and I need to come out 300 millimeters, and then another 250 millimeters in the x direction, and I need to come down. Uh, 200 millimeters in the z direction. Okay, so expressing that in vector format, we've got RAC is 0.3 plus 0.25 i hat. So that's in the x direction, I'm adding this bit here and this bit here. In the j hat direction, which is the y, I'm coming out 400, so 0.4 meters. And in the k hat direction, uh, because it's acting positive in that direction, I'm coming down uh, 200 millimeters. In the minus the direction. So I have plus, plus, minus. Okay, so that gives me the displacement vector from A to C. Again, it is really important that that displacement vector is from A to point C, that's not from C to point A. So not only does the displacement vector come first, but it must be from where you're taking the moment to where the force is acting. The next thing I need then is the vector F expressed in its components. Uh, so again, I want to I'm given some angles. So I want to figure out what, what are the, the different components of this. So I want to break this into an X component, a Y component, and a Z component. So if I start with the Z component, that's the easiest one. So if I do 80 times the sine of 30 degrees, that will give me this vertical component here, which is aligned with the Z axis. And for this force, that would have to be acting in a negative direction. So I have minus. 80 sine 30 k hat. Okay. The i hat and j hat components are a little bit more complicated, but if I take the 80 cosine of 30, what I'll get is I get this uh, component here. Okay. And if I take this component and then do the cosine of 40, I will get this component. So that'll give me the j hat. And then if I have 80 cosine 30 times sine of 40, I would get the i component. 
So that's where I'm getting these values from. I have 80 cosine gives me this component here. And then if I take that times the sine of 40, I get this portion here. And that gives me the x component, the i hat. If I do 80 cosine of 30, cosine of 40, I get this component here. And that is the j hat component. Okay, so if I multiply those out, I get 44.5 i hat plus 53.1 j hat and uh, minus 40 k hat uh, newtons. Okay. So now that I have my displacement vector and I have my force, uh, all expressed in i hat, j hat, k hat, and uh, I take the vector cross product of that. So I set up my determinant, it's i hat, j hat, k hat, 0.55. 5, Point four minus point two. So again, my i hat term here, my j hat term here, my k hat term here, and then I have my force terms: the i hat, j hat, k hat of those. Okay. So multiplying those out, then I evaluate my determinant, and I get my answer out. Okay. The key step here is that the intellectual component contribution is really coming and setting up this determinant. We're less interested in the mechanics of working that out. That's just a mathematical exercise you should be able to do. And you can see my workings there of it. And um, you can pause the video and have a look at those. Okay, that concludes that question. Uh, thank you for watching.